Hey, can you guys hear me now? Sound? Are we getting sound? I hope we got sound. Hmm. Hello, can you guys hear me? Don't scare me like that. Yeah, I know, can you hear me now? Okay, Poof. all right. So I was just in the process of explaining uh, that the people have been demanding arrivals for quite a while. Danny and I have been slacking over the summer. You know, Danny's been off on beaches somewhere with the rest of the chess.com crew. I've been doing my own thing. We've been slacking, we gotta be honest with you guys. But we're back to rivals now. Danny just sent me a message on Skype like a half hour ago. It's time to do it. And we're just doing it live too. You know, Bill O'Reilly style. Let's do it live. <laughs> so let me tell Danny that I'm good to go. So this is a Chess 960 and Classical Bullet stream. So we're playing Bullet 1 plus 1. The first three games, it'll be best of three. So I guess it might not be three games. But best of three, 960. And then the first to five and a half points for uh, classical bullet and Tony Rowe asked what is classical bullet <laughs> it's a good question because those seem to be two diametrically opposed things but yeah normal bullet with the regular starting position oh we might have a delay because Danny says twitch is down he is streaming on twitch I didn't link the chess.com twitch but I'm sure if you google chess.com or twitch chess.com twitch you'll find it very easily hello Colin good to see you Hello, Mr. Kick Singh, Kevin, Mila, Jason, Jonathan, Wandering Wonder, a Frenchman, Maha. Hopefully there's not too much lag. It'll be just a minute before we start. How's it going, Matthew? And also James and Kelmano. Of course, how could I forget you, Colin? You're the only other mod on this channel other than Anton. Hey, John. Marek, say your name. <laughs> Sorry about that audio thing at the beginning. I'm not sure why that happened. Maybe it's because it's been a while since I've streamed, but we'll make it work. It'll be fine. Thank you, Prophecy. So Danny and I have already played 13 Rivals matches. This is match number 14. I've got a playlist for it if you want to go check it out. But yeah, we're on match number 14, hard to believe. Also, I do have plans to play Simon Williams very soon. I know some people have been asking about that match. The Ginger GM, Simon and I are going to sit down and play a match very soon. And even before that happens, this Saturday, I have a match against Grandmaster Tall Baron. The Israeli Grandmaster, who is also here on YouTube. We're going to stream that match. That match will probably take place on Lee Chess, and it's going to start at 12 o'clock p.m. U.S. Central Time. I'll probably put out an announcement video in the next day or so. Part of the reason I want to do this one with Danny is because i got to get warmed up for that other match against Tall. So we're just bringing on everyone in the next few days. Thanks, Arslan. I'll try to make it memorable. If you're watching on the archive version, feel free to fast forward through this part if you just don't want to see the lead up to the match with Danny because he is having some issues with Twitch, it sounds like. So while we're waiting, let's just watch a game. Let's see if there's any decent game going on here. Hello, Sarvesh and Dan. Nice to see you. John, did you have nightmares about B5? Yeah, so he, <laughs> you're referring to the most recent video I posted, the archives video. So Danny says Twitch is having a problem on their end. I don't know if Twitch is down entirely. 
and he's going to local record or record to YouTube. So let me just give him a response there. Yeah, it looks like Twitch is having major issues. For once, streaming on YouTube pays off over Twitch. <laughs> this is why I keep things all inclusive here on YouTube, even though I have talked about switching to Twitch. Just never got around to it. YouTube works for my purposes. Hey, John, how far would you say you are from the GM title? So I need two more norms and 50 more FIDE points. So I'm a bit of a ways. Like on paper, it doesn't look like that much work, but getting norms is incredibly difficult. And those 50 FIDE points from 2450 FIDE to 2500 FIDE are quite difficult to achieve. Yeah, that king behind me is pretty large. John, when are we going to see a dual commentary versus Naka? Maybe when I come up with like $50,000 to pay Naka for such a match. Because I'm sure he could charge something like that. <laughs> no, but he might be willing to play sometime. I mean, he plays Eric Hansen. He's on chess.com playing Bullet quite often. So it might be possible to arrange that. Not a dual commentary, but maybe I could catch him for a game or two while he's online. Yeah, I haven't been uploading as much lately. Just been busy in the past month or so. Otherwise, I'm doing well. I've been teaching. I've been working on Chessable. You guys have probably seen that Chessable is crowdfunding. So we are looking to raise investment for that. And if you're interested in checking out our crowdfunding campaign, you can go to our Cedars page. I'll post the link in the comments after this video. Also, just another Chessable plug, uh, International Master Christoph Selecki, Chess Explained. He recently posted a repertoire on Chessable, and it's fantastic. It's on the Benko Gambit, but it's actually a holistic repertoire uh, for black against d4. And I'm biased because, you know, I co-founded Chessable. It's like partly my site, but this repertoire is really, really good. And if you know Kristoff and you've seen the work that he's done, um, you know, you know the quality that he's capable of producing. So I'd recommend checking that out, especially if you're looking for something against d4. Something aggressive, too. I kind of want to play a game just to get warmed up here. But Danny is asking me a question. <laughs> Danny's never streamed on YouTube before, so he's currently asking me what to do. Thanks for stopping in, G. Taylor. Hey, John, when are you coming to Scandinavia? I am not sure about that. I'd love to come, maybe for a tournament sometime. I'd really like to go to Norway in particular. Norway or Sweden, one of the two. Perhaps both. Yeah, so this our Cedars campaign is not open to U.S. investors, unfortunately. Sarvish, we're just waiting for Danny. There's a problem on Danny's end with Twitch. Or on Twitch's end, I should say. So he's trying to stream on YouTube or do a local recording. So I apologize the match is not starting immediately, but we'll have to wait it out. Ah, the Play Magnus app. Yeah, I've got a lot of requests for those videos. I'm going to try to make a Play Magnus video or two. It is on my bucket list. My to-do list. Okay, it looks like Danny is ready. So we might be starting momentarily. Thank you, Florin. 
Alex Astana Lopez. Uh, I have not talked to him about a dual commentary match, but I'm sure we'd both be open to that at some point. I will be playing Simon after Tall Baron. So maybe Simon and I can play in the next week or two. Don't worry, it'll happen. Trust me. <laughs> Believe me. As a certain politician would say. Thoughts on the first debate? Yeah, we're, we're not going to go into that. I, I think I'm just opening up a can of worms if we start talking about that. How's it going, Danny? Danny Walker, that is. Hey, Carlos. Glad you caught a stream. Do you not want to answer Carlson versus Naka, or haven't you seen the question? I didn't see the question. I assume you're asking about the upcoming Nakamura versus Carlson match, which will take place on chess.com at the end of October, I believe. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm going to go with Naka in that match. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Naka is going to win that. I don't know how much of a limb that is because Naka is a tremendous fast player, uh, bullet and blitz. So that said, I mean, Carlson has been incredibly impressive in this competition up till now. So it would not surprise me if Carlson won, but I'm sticking with my Nakamura prediction. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for tuning in. John, what inspired you to play the Scandi? You know, that's a good question, Arslan. I think I saw some other players here in my home state of Minnesota playing it, and I just decided to pick it up at some point. I don't think it was any particular book or article or something I read, but I liked the look of it, and some other players were having success with it, so I gave it a shot and kind of ran with it. Okay, I think we are good to go here. If I can find Danny's challenge. There we go. Okay, game one. Wow. All right, so this is chess 960 bullet. I got to get my bearings like really quick here. I'm going to open the bishop. Open this bishop on A1. So the first couple games are going to be chess 960. And I am completely out of my element in chess 960, but... We're going to try to do this. I also have to remember that you can castle in this variant. That's crucial to remember. Um, let's go d4 and try not to lose on time. Let's take with the bishop. Maybe I'm eyeing this pawn. Uh huh. I feel like I should get my queen out somewhere. I'm going to bring the queen over here so I can get ready to castle. I want to play my rook over. So, castle? There we go. Success. I managed to castle. All right, guys, this is looking good. Let's play this move. Can I do that? Yeah, I think so. It's flashy. I don't know how good it is. He can probably actually just move his queen and ignore it. But I'm trying to get him to take so I can take with my pawn and use the pin down the C file. Why is my rating so much higher than Danny's in Chess 960? I've never played this before on chess.com. <laughs> I don't like this. Uh, all right, let's take that guy. And we've got to watch out for issues on h2 let's play this safety move ah, f5 was hanging i could have taken that all right no matter the game continues maybe queen d4 coming up or knight d4 knight d4 could be nifty I'm a little worried about my king safety however uh but let's go here this has got to be correct i think if bishop b7 i can take and he must have some issues uh let's play f4 just put a stop to queen h2 i'm watching that time like a hawk let's go here Bring this back. Knight c3, though, could be annoying for me to deal with. Um, let's bring this up. Threaten mate. But knight c3 still. Very awkward move. Uh, okay, he hung this pawn. That helps. Let's go take this guy over here. And just plug that d4 weakness. Look for a trade. Now I'm hitting his bishop and his pawn. Still, he can get that knight c3 move in pretty much whenever he wants. But now, I think I'm collecting some useful pawns. Let's take. He can take here, but does it matter much? I don't know. I'm actually kind of happy that he took that pawn. I'm going to force a swap now. Let's go here. And let's play f5. How about that? Let's go g4 now. 
Go here, attack this guy. Mm, be careful where you step, John. Don't step into trouble. You can go for some checks now. Yeah, but he's got issues with his king all of a sudden. Let's do this. Ah, g7 might have been better there. That might have been a lot better, actually. Let's go there now. We'll try to rectify that. Ooh, he's almost in a stalemate, though. Check. Um, let's just trade this off. I think that's the simplest way to win this position. Mm, I do have to be a little careful, though. Check. 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 Check him all over the place. Now we're getting this in. Okay, now we're going to win. King h6, rook g8, gg, finally. Whew, all right. We take that first 960 game. Get those fire emojis going, guys. I know this match took a little while to get in gear. But, whoa, my heart is, like, pounding after that game. <laughs> all right. And I gained 45 points. I'm up to 25-27 in, I guess this is chess 960, the 960 category. Hello, Trevor. All right, Danny is looking for a rematch. This is tough because you got to get your bearings so quickly. You're just thrust into this position. You have no idea what's coming, but you just have to react basically and start playing chess as soon as possible. I'm just spending a couple seconds. Yeah, I'm going to play symmetrically. Just a couple seconds trying to figure out how to arrange my pieces in a logical way. Let's take this. Um, he's playing a gambit. It's very interesting. Um, let's go g5. I'm going to open up my queen. And let's go g4. Time, time, time. Can't get too far down on time. Let's go here and attack this pawn. Maybe knight h5 or knight d5 coming up. I'm going to go knight h5, actually, because I like the look of this move. Knight g3. This queen is a little bit boxed in already, isn't it? So let's try to support this. This reminds me of a king's gambit. Reminds me heavily of a king's gambit. Mm, f6. Yeah, let's go f6. Try to open some lines. My bishop against a2. Just trying to swap maybe on e5 is a possibility. He's thinking. I got him thinking. I'm up like 10 seconds now on the clock. Fire emojis, all right. And the fire trucks are out. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the support. Team Scandy. What's up with Danny's connection? Okay, maybe it's not a connection problem. Uh, let's take that. Takes with the knight. Okay. Uh, any smothered mates I got to worry about? This pawn is hanging. Let's bring the bishop out to guard it. D6. G3. Kind of like smothering his queen. Yeah, so develop this guy. I bet he brings his bishop out now. Almost seems like he has to do that. Um, let's go... Uh, that's kind of weak. Let's do this. And let's bring this back. Let's support that. Well, now I'm way down on time. Look at this. Let's look for a swap here. A2 is kind of hanging now. He's exposed. He's definitely exposed at this point. Bishop b4 I'm looking for. Let's do that. Oh, he's in trouble. Bishop takes c3 coming. Problem on a2. He's in big trouble, I think, here, guys. Uh, let's take that. Let's play b5. Check. We're going to go here. Um, okay, take. Don't want to trade a queens, though. I haven't castled, you notice. I'm going to go on the counterattack. Looking for rook f2. Go here. I'm hoping my rook actually proves handy on the file like that. Um, let's go here. Mm hmm. Don't want to trade. His king is really exposed. So I don't think we want to swap of any kind. Attacking c2. Check. Check again. D5 maybe coming up. Check. Bring this back. Check. Danny is quite fast, I gotta say. Check. Let's bring the queen over here. 
check again. Mm, let's go here. Queen f2 now a threat. Check. 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 <laughs> check. Check. I don't know what to do here, so I'm going to settle for a draw, I think. Oh, I took the draw. I took it. I was down a pawn here. His king is a little exposed, but I don't know how I win this. I think playing on is risky. He was doing a really good job of keeping his queen around his king for defense. Ooh, I thought I was going to take that one. Because just the way it was playing out when I got bishop into b4. Let's scroll back to that moment. Where was that? Yeah, right here, when I sent the bishop around to b4 and a2 was weak, I thought he was done. But maybe he's okay. Uh, he found a way to squirm free. Take, and it looks extremely dangerous. Queen takes a2, and this king has to come out to d2, but I couldn't land a hammer blow. I mean, if I check him here on a1, he is squirting out through d2, and he might be safe. All right, so this is the third game. This I, ha I basically free roll right now. I'm deciding what to do on move one, but I'm free rolling. Um, let's play d4. Meaning even if I lose this, we do split the 960 portion. So a win or a draw is good for me. Okay, let's bring these knights out. I like what he's doing with his knight development. Uh, let's play this, e3. Kind of solid. Let's play bishop d3. Castling short seems logical, so I think I'm going to do that. Oh, but I can't. I can't castle that way? Hmm. All right. Um, I've got to improvise then. Let's go, let's go A4. There must be some rule I was not aware of that prevents me from castling. Okay, I'm throwing my, my pawns up the board. We'll find out if this is good or not. I'm trying to sink the knight in. It does have the backing of the pawn and the queen. Maybe he can just take with his bishop, though. I'm not sure he wants to give up his dark square bishop, however. I gotta keep in mind that this pawn is weak. Knight c6 would be awfully cool, but I don't think it's... Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I see a cool idea. I'm gonna go for it. Then I'm gonna take a6 and play b5. And I think his queen is trapped. Uh, do I play b5? No, I think it's more accurate to do this move. Do that, and then his queen is trapped. Where can he go? I was going to play b5, but he has bishop a3 check, and then he can play queen over to d6. So this is much neater. So I took away the flight square by playing the check on a6 first. That's very important. He might have a little bit of compensation. It's not like a, a slam dunk, but hey, a queen's a queen. If I can get organized now, this should be a victory. Let's go here and just clamp this square. He castles. Yeah, smart. Uh, whoa, I got to watch my time. I really got to watch that time. Go here. Take. Mm, I'm going to go here, actually. Whoa, move faster, John. I'm going to give him the queen, but we're going to get his bishop on d6. So I'm up a piece. I'm up an entire piece. I think that was the simplest way to handle the position, quite honestly. Let's go over here and just defend. do this bring this knight around somewhere let's offer a trade of the rooks take it bring this over oh i'm not up a piece it's equal material why did i think i was up a piece this whole time <laughs> i have no idea uh go here attack his his knight whoa i miscalculated something there clearly I don't know what I was thinking in that sequence. This is tough. He's going for the win. But I don't think he's going to be able to win this. This looks very tough for him. I think it's just a draw, actually. I'm okay with the draw because that wins me this segment of the match. Whew. Okay, draw. <laughs> that was an insane game also. 
So let me go check out that move where I played knight c6. That was a cool move. I'm glad to have spotted that in a bullet game. So that was right here on move 9. Knight c6. It looks like it drops a knight. But the point is, after he takes it, I take this pawn, he blocks here, and then I go here. And I'm picking up his queen. But he has two minor pieces for it. So what went wrong from this point? I mean, my b5 pawn was kind of weak. Maybe I wasted too much time defending that. He was able to castle, so that's how you castle in this position. You can castle short that way. After I erroneously tried to castle long. Oh, yeah, I completely miscalculated here. I only got two minor pieces for the queen. For some reason, I thought I was getting a rook and a minor piece. Eight points for nine, but that was not the case at all. Yeah, two minor pieces for the queen, and that's why we ended up with virtually equal material here. I'm only up a pawn. All right, well, at least we didn't lose a 960 game. So now we're on to the bullet portion. Hmm. That's a shame, though, because, yeah, right around here, he does have the two bishops. and My king is a question mark on c1, but I should win this position. I should win this. One win, two draws. Two draws and 960 in bullet. Don't see that every day. Yeah, I agree, Lucas. My queen was not well placed. It's kind of just hanging out on the A file. wonder why I couldn't castle here. I thought for sure I'd be able to castle. Oh, I guess castling in this case would be the king coming over to a1, not king to b1 like I was trying to do. Right? No, no, it would be king. Oh, 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 it would be king on c1 where it is, and this rook would jump over to d1 if I were to castle. So I think if I wanted to castle, this rook would have to be gone, and this rook would have to go over here. And I think to do that on chess.com, I should do what I was trying to do. But the problem was this rook was on d1, blocking the other rook from coming over. I don't know if anyone can confirm that. All right, so now we're on to the bullet. This is a race to five and a half points. First game of the match. Oh, we got to go with Scandi. Danny knows it's coming. You all know it's coming. <laughs> Let's play the queen d8 variation. I'm getting a lot of practice in with this lately. Uh, no, I'm not sure what that move's about, so I'm going to go here. h3 is kind of interesting, but... So he's trying to attack my bishop and also the pawn, but this seems all right. What we're doing right now. Let's go here and attack that knight. Try to force it away. It's castle. If bishop g5, probably just knight bd7. Uh, I'm going to snatch this pawn because I'm really greedy like that. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, we're going to take that guy. And then I'm going to play knight c6 and develop. I think he's going to put that bishop on g5. I could be wrong, but let's stop him from going b4. I think he's trying to support that pawn on c5, so let's just put an end to that. I've never met a pawn I didn't like, so I could not resist taking that guy on c2. And I'm hoping that this pawn just proves to be weak. Let's bring this back for protection purposes. Maybe knight e5 coming up. Yeah, let's do this. I think you play bishop b5. It's a little irritating. I'm going to kick this away for now. Bring it back. i got to be mindful of sacrifices here, however. I think I should reroute this so I can get knight d5 working. He might want to put his knight back on c3, to be quite honest. Um, hmm. Okay, let's gain a tempo first on his queen. After he's done that sacrifice. And now we're going to try to defend. This is a theme in Danny and I's matches. Danny just throwing everything at me and me grimly defending. Taking material and just holding on. It's mostly worked out, I gotta say. But it leads to some nail-biting positions. Knight f6. Go here. You can take this guy, I guess. Uh, knight e4 looks good. Attacking the queen. Aha, uh -huh. also a knight here. Knight f3 check is now an issue for him to solve. He's got a lot of pawns, though. Knight takes e4. You could definitely try it. 
I guess I have knight f3 check, very important move. And I'm gonna get the swap of the queens. That's pretty helpful. Yeah, we get to take the queens off the board. This is one one bullet, so the clock is gonna be less of a factor. It's still pretty fast, but that one second increment means you can win games on the board that you might not have to, time to in an actual match if it was just 1-0. So, all right, so we win that game. I think his sacrifice was on sound, taking on h6 right here on move 22. Albeit interesting, like, he gets two pawns for the piece, and my king is pretty open, but without that third pawn and without ways to bring further pieces into the attack easily, I gotta believe in black's defensive resources in this position. I'd really like a queen trade here, that's why I was playing queen d8 to f6 to g7, trying to put a stop to his initiative on that wing. Hey, Philip, good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks to all of the viewers right now. How many viewers do we currently have? Almost 300. Awesome. Right, in, right smack dab in the middle of the day, U.S. time, evening for Europeans. Lucas says totally unsound. He really doesn't like that knight sacrifice of Danny's, or uh, bishop sacrifice. It had some value, but yeah, I think black should be able to defend. For a bullet game, it's probably okay. But yes, queen d8 to f6 was a timely defensive resource. Hey, Jared. And just a reminder that Danny is streaming right now. I don't know if he got the stream back up, but I think he's streaming on YouTube. Someone in the chat can confirm, given the problems with Twitch. Okay, I'm trying to rematch him here. All right. Let's open with knight f3. This is my go-to bullet opening. It has been of late. Knight f3, g3, bishop g2. Like all the cool kids do. Let's play c4. Let's attack that pawn right away. Hmm. I'm going to go d3. And play knight bd2. And put the bishop on b2. Danny's got a very reliable setup, though. I'm going to chase this light square bishop. We're going to see if we can track that guy down. Wow, just strikes on that side of the board right away. Okay, well, let's do this. Bring this over. Maybe knight d4. I'm not going to take that bishop quite yet. Because I do feel I can take it at a later date. Uh, maybe g5. Yeah, let's do g5 right now. Let's try to inconvenience this knight. Now I'm going to take and play e3. And put a stop. No knight f4 business. We don't want that knight intruding on our position. He might invade on a2, and I do have to take that seriously, so probably we should try to swap down against this. Yeah, let's trade off some of these pieces. Maybe queen over to b2 coming up. It's not a mate threat due to his knight on h5, but it stops him from infiltrating. It does stop him from the t for the time being. d3 is a little bit weak, though. I think maybe this move... Could be helpful. Also, if I can bring the bishop to e2 and perhaps threaten discoveries against the knight on h5, that could be good. Yeah, like, now let's play this. Having in mind, moving this knight, knight d4. Knight d2, maybe. Uh, let's go here, knight e1. <laughs> I'm going to go to c2, I've decided. To try to attack this pawn. Danny's thinking, I've got a 2 to 1 time advantage right now. Wow, does that work? I don't think that works, though, due to queen d1. And that defends my back rank. And the knight here. So we managed to refute that idea of his. Go here now. Here. Just support the b3 square. Yeah, and he should be probably losing this, but i got to be careful still. Let's drop this back now. Look for a trade. I'm 
I'm gonna take that. Oh, I shouldn't allow his knight to get up there. Let's just take this guy so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Now I'm gonna bring my king up a little bit. I'm gonna bring it up to e3 for protection. And then next, we're gonna eventually try to win this, basically. Let's block here. At some point, he's probably gonna go after my h pawn. Yeah, case in point. Ooh, and he blundered into the fork. Yeah, fork on the king and the queen. All right, so we managed to survive, and I crossed 2,700 in bullet with that game. That's awesome. Didn't know I was that close to it. So he miscalculated when he played knight takes b3. He missed the resource queen back to d1 is what happened. So that was this moment right here. And he spent quite a bit of time before this move, too. He spent 15 seconds, and... Yeah, it works if not for queen d1, guarding both e1 and c and a1. So I can sympathize with him there. He just missed a particular move. Otherwise, it was a close game up till this point. I possessed the bishop pair, and I was trying to set up threats on the a1, h8 diagonal, specifically queen takes g7 mate. But I had to dislodge his knight on e5, on h5 rather, and that's why I did this whole bishop back to f1 to e2 maneuver, trying to target that piece. Close game, though. All right, so game three. Opens with d4. What to do? What to do? You know, I'm going to play knight f6. I'm going to try to put Christoph's repertoire into action, but I forget that Danny plays this, the Verisov. <laughs> okay, um... Let's go c5. We'll play it aggressive, why not? Let's go a6 now. This is kind of weird. I'm half expecting a 960 position when we click new game. <laughs> I guess do, playing 960 does that to you. I'm looking at this normal chess position being like, what is this? Let's take with the pawn. So I'm trying to strand his knight out here on the h4 square. There's no direct threat, but maybe there could be in the future. Let's go knight d5, so this is a little tricky. Now I am threatening his knight. Ah, I might be winning a piece here due to g5 coming up. Yeah, if bishop g3 or pawn g3, I have g5 in both cases. However, he does have c4. He has c4 trying to chase me away. Uh, maybe he didn't have time to figure that out, though. Okay, so g6 should be safe, right? Yeah, he's doing everything possible to try to prevent me from playing this g5 move. Um, I can take, I can play h4... Uh, his piece is still really awkward, though. After queen g3, I think just bishop e7 is working. And then he's going to have to sacrifice. Uh, hmm. I'm going to do this, though. I don't, I'm not sure I want to allow him to sacrifice on g6. That may not be in my best interest to allow that. This is getting weird already. He can castle, but then I'm playing bishop e7. That bishop e7 move. g5 even here. How about that? Yeah, I gotta hurry. Don't have much time. Okay, so let's take. And we're gonna go here. Meanwhile, he's gotta figure out some way to get his knight untangled right here, or he's gonna be hurting. Now my rook is defended. So now I am threatening g takes h4. He's gonna have a hard time getting through here. Um... Boy, um, let's go here. <laughs> this is really odd, I know. King b1 is probably a good move for him. He can't take d5 because I give a check on d3. Oh, he's going to do it, although he is blundering into that, I think. Let's go here. Okay, so I think I'm doing well again all of a sudden. Rook coming to c8. Um, hurry, though, John. Let's bring this up. I want rook over. Queen check. Get this in. And finally, I can take and then play rook c7. We're going to play this rook up. Or queen up, rather. 
check. Go take this guy. So now time is really the only thing I have to combat. I have lost games like this before. <laughs> when the clock has been a factor. Check my most recent ICC video and you'll see. All right, so we won. I think I misplayed it right around the time his knight was trapped. This was a nice resource he came up with. Knight f5 check, queen takes. If I take with the pawn, he has rook takes d5. So queen takes and then c4. Because the thing is, uh, maybe I can actually just play my knight away somewhere, like knight f6. I thought queen d6 was going to be a problem, but if I were to do this and then check, I think I can just slide the king back to d8. And it looks a little scary, but there's nowhere he can, he can follow up with a check. So I should be winning in this case. Hey, Drama5. That chess set I use in the archives video, that plastic set, I think that's called the ultimate set. It, it's not produced anymore as far as I know. And the board, I'm not sure. It's a pretty generic wood board. You can find replicas of that online, I'm sure. I'll see if I can look on Amazon and find like an equivalent link you guys to it. This is a useful trick for those of you who play these positions. So when, when white goes knight h4, playing bishop e4, and then after he takes it, take with the pawn. And that has the effect of stranding the knight out here on h4. It can't go back to f3, so you can see that Danny experienced problems with that piece for the rest of the game. I think queen h5 was mistaken. I think he's got to do c4 here. Although I'm not sure how that works out. But I feel like he should attack that knight ASAP. So let's offer Danny a rematch. I think it's 3-0 at the moment. We're playing a race to five and a half points. Thank you, Skate Empire. All right, let's go back to knight f3. Seems to be working. Ian Keto. Mm, I'm going to go directly for b3 this time. He might play e5, but he chooses not to. Yeah, he's going to play it solid. We might have a repeat of that other game. He's still going to let me chase that light square bishop. All right, I'm going to take that opportunity again. Note that knight takes g4 here does not work. So let's keep the tension for a move on this side of the board. I'm kind of thinking take this way, actually. Uh, let's take this now. Bring this knight around. Maybe knight up to d4. Can I take that? I really want to. Now let's play knight d4 first. Eh, he has queen b6 though. Uh, but then I can take on d5 and I might be getting at his c6 square, right? I guess he can take and allow that. Maybe it's no big deal. It somehow seems like progress, but perhaps not. Um, okay, let's go here. Knight e5 may be an issue, but I guess just rook back to c3. Not too bad. Just seeing if any tactics work here, but nah. Knight rook takes d6, probably not sound. Okay, so this pawn is a little bit weak. If I had to choose a side, I'd probably take black here. I think his setup is a little more solid than mine. Um... This knight is hanging. I should just defend it. He's got bishop b4, though. Mm. This is a bit ugly. I don't like how I'm playing this. My rook is on the run. Okay, let's defend this guy. Oh. Yeah, this is the problem. I've got a lot of hanging stuff. Uh, rook c8, I guess. Don't like to have to play that move, but he was threatening rook takes b2. Down 10 seconds. I gotta hurry. He's looking for something, though, right now. Hopefully he gets nervous and doesn't find anything. <laughs> All right, let's take this guy. Now I'm going to say, go ahead and take this. I'm going after this one. Especially, yeah, especially since I, oh no, I just hung my queen. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So right after I moved, <laughs> that backward knight move, knight takes f7. I was getting all excited because I thought I was winning the pawn in this case. Yeah. So I, I guess I should have played knight f3 here. Knight f3 and trade the knights. That wasn't a great game by me, though. That opening did not go well, mental note. I think I should deviate from this setup. Or at least maybe play it like I did in the first game, taking here. I think allowing him to play b takes c4 and then me taking with the d pawn is not such a successful plan. There you go. There's your queen hang. Queen hang of the game. Saw it right after I moved. <laughs> Someone says, I, it's okay, John, I do that every game. That makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> Mildly better. Yeah, bring out the crying emojis. Where are the crying Jordans when you need them? Okay, so it's 3-1 to one right now. This score didn't reset after the 960 portion, so I'm pretty sure it's 3-1. to one. Okay, let's go with knight f6 again. I seem to get a good position out of that last game. So I'm going to stick with this setup. And I think a6 is good, just taking control of that b5 square. I'm a big fan of that move. And then just bishop here. And now we're going to defend the c5 pawn. Let's see if he goes with knight h4 again. I think he may want to think twice about knight takes e4. He seemed to experience a lot of problems. Yeah, he's going to do it this way this time, which makes more sense, I believe. His pawns are a little bit tender in the center is the only thing. Like, now I have ideas of taking and playing queen b6, which maybe is good enough to go for right away. Although, this pawn could be poisoned, right? Like, if I take it, there's knight a4, so I probably should not do that. Let's just develop. Now I might look for bishop g3. Yeah, let's put the bishop in here. Let's go here, knight e7. I'm wondering if he's going to castle long or not. Let's go here, because if he castles long now, bishop f4 will be his punishment. Let's go bishop f4 at this point, and knight into g3, I'm thinking. Try to force him to give up his dark square bishop, basically. Got a nice grip on the dark squares in this particular position. That move I missed, but maybe not that big of a deal. It's a little annoying in the short run. Just bring this over. I'm going to try to walk my king over. Ah, good move by him there. Yeah, okay, I got to go here, but now b7 is hanging is the problem. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm down a pawn. That's unfortunate. Yeah, queen b4 was nice. Queen a4 check and queen b4. He combined those two moves well. Let's play the bishop here. Ah, knight b7. Ugh, don't spot that, Danny. Thank you. G4 might be good in this position. Try to get this knight back involved. So two knights versus two bishops. I'm going to have some play, though, against his queen side, I think. Let's go here. We're just going to try to maneuver, basically. We can pop that bishop out to g3. Okay, well, we forced one trade. That's helpful. Let's go here. Attack this guy. Hmm. Let's bring this in. Let's take that. Looking for tactics, but I don't see them. I think I gotta go back. Unfortunately. Okay, we do get to establish the knight there. That's helpful. Ooh, we got this in. Nice little trick. That was lucky, though. Yeah, that was just a complete blunder on his part. We got lucky there. Okay, so now we're ahead in exchange. And this should be good if we can hold on. Take that. I just got bishop e8, but um, that shouldn't be that big of a deal. Let's give a check. Go take this. So we got his king on the run. 
Helpful. Check. Let's go attack that bishop. Um, okay, I'm going to go here. It's a tricky move. Uh, let's go here. I got to start advancing my e-pawn. Got to get this going. Um, let's go here. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think this is a draw now. Yeah, I think it's a draw. I don't think he can rightly play for a win, nor can I. Man. Oh, I blew that game. That was a golden opportunity. Golden opportunity. Ah, So, I couldn't put him away when my rooks were roving on, like, his second and third rank. Yeah, that was sloppy. It was surprisingly tough right around here with bishop e8. I even saw bishop e8 coming, but I didn't see a way to prevent it. I can't play rookie two right here because his bishop covers that square. Yeah, and once he got that pawn, my pawns were a little fractured. I think I should still win from here, but he got his bishop on a, a stable square and didn't make any blunders. Like right here with rook f5, I was trying to induce him to play king takes a5 so I could play king f6 check and win his rook, but he avoided that. Okay, but half, half point, I'll take it given that opening. Or maybe the middle game more accurately when he played queen a4 check, queen b4, queen takes b7. He was up a pawn there, and my position was on the verge of collapse. He did miss a tactic earlier on, I believe. I think right here. If he would have played knight b7 right at this moment, attacking my rook, and then after the rook moves away somewhere, let's say like rook here, take, that removes the defender of the g3 knight. So he picks up a piece. John, can we make a hair like you? <laughs> I think you mean my haircut, hairstyle. You gotta go to my barber, Scott, here in Minnesota. I'll give you his contact info if you're ever in the area. <laughs> All right, so three and a half, one and a half. Gotta pick it up. Sloppy games these last couple. Thank you, Zaja. I'm willing to repeat this line against Danny, though. This whole setup. C5 followed by A6, knight out to C6, bishop to F5. I'm fine with this. Okay, let's play D4 this time around. Not getting much traction with knight F3, at least in that last game. Let's play bishop F4. So we're going to go with the London. Ooh, actually, he's going to play something different. All right. So let's go a4. Guess we're going for this old setup. Now he usually goes b4. Mm, but he takes. Okay, that's different. Danny already playing this a little unusually. Hmm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make this interesting right from the get-go. I'm going to try to force through this e5 break and then play bishop b5 check just to kind of confound his development. That's my whole goal right here. He's got some light score problems. I can pick up this A pawn whenever I want. He might be best off playing bishop d7, but I know he'd rather play a knight to uh, that square. Whoa, he's going to play king there. That one I did not expect. So I guess his argument... Nah, I'm going to castle. If he wants to go knight takes d5, more power to him. Um, he's just going to attack that pawn, though. Okay, well, let's do this. See if we can get him to part with this light square bishop. I'm going to take with my pawn if he does that and try to establish this annoying pawn deep in his position. Queen there, okay. All right, John, we gotta punish him for this. This cannot stand. Let's take idea bishop f4. He might be able to take here, though. I'm not sure. Okay, bishop f4. Develop with tempo. Tempo on the queen. 
And we're also hitting b8. So if queen d7, there's knight takes b8, which I gotta assume is a disaster for him. Yeah, he's just gonna sack his queen. I cannot blame him, but I think this is gonna be good. Take, take. Yeah, this should be good. He's gotta take on c6 if he wants to get the material back, but then we have this. Followed by queen d8. Yeah, that's lights out. Okay, so we take that game. That was just an opening disaster for Danny. So he tried to play it in Benoni style, but I think combining b takes a4 with d6 must be some sort of error. And I was trying to punish that with this quick e4, e5. And then bishop b5 check. I gotta, I gotta believe king f8 is a weak move here. It would pain me to do this as black, but I think he's gotta play bishop d7 and block the check that way. Try to trade one of these pieces. Otherwise, my miners are too strong. Yeah, because after that it was too difficult for him to save. Maybe on rook takes a4, he has to try knight takes d5. I thought he was going to attempt this move to get rid of one of the defenders of this knight. And I think I was looking at this. Should he play that? Which can get weird. Mm, maybe this isn't as good as I thought, though, because he can just take back, can't he? For some reason, I thought I might be winning this piece or getting in bishop f4, but that might not be the case. All right, so four and a half, one and a half. Let's try to win this game. This is the final game if we win it. I'm going to stick with this line. We got the thematic match going on. Danny's pet, Verisov, versus my usual setup here. Okay, yeah, bishop f5. We're going to do this whole thing. Looks like we're going to repeat this. <laughs> I just like this position. I mean, it can't possibly be good for white. <laughs> I feel like I've said that many times this match already, but I really believe it. Look how compact my structure is. Look how many weaknessy, weaknesses he has on the dark squares. Yeah, he's got the two bishops, but big deal. Let's go knight f4, attack this pawn. Maybe queen g5 coming up. Hmm. Let's still play queen g5. Let's just see what he does against that move. So knight takes g2 in mind. Yeah, we compelled him to bring his bishop all the way back. I think I'm going to castle now. He could play g3, but then knight h5, I guess. Any tricks here? Take, take. Nah, no tricks. Ooh. I'm going to bring this back. I do have to be a little mindful of g3. So assuming he castles long, I'll try to start attacking him on the queen side, basically. Um, let's go here. I don't really want to trade. He's kind of bottled up right now, so let's attempt to avoid a trade for the time being. We'll see if he attacks me. I think there's a very good chance he will. h5. h5 might be good. Hmm... All right, let's try to counterattack in the center. Really not sure I should have allowed what I just did right there. B5 may now be out of place. I'm not sure that was helpful to me. He could castle now. He does take here or something else. Let's do this. Not sure how this is going to turn out, but we'll find out. So knight 5 hit the queen, hit F3. Let's bring this here. There's some bishop f4 ideas if this knight leaves the e2 square. Yeah, like now I could do it. The only thing is it's going to give him the initiative if I play that. But it's an exchange, so I think I should do it. Like he could play g5 now if he wants. Uh, let's go queen e5. I'm just trying to guard the d5 pawn a bit better. Yeah, this is what I was concerned about. Uh, let's go here. He's very solid, despite being down in exchange. Uh, this could turn on an instant for me. In an instant. G5 looks good. Okay. He's going to take this pawn. Trying to survive. Rook H1. 
Yikes. Yeah, this is bad. This is bad. <laughs> I gotta go back, but he has knight h6. Don't think I had anything better there. Anyways, rook h7 is almost mate. Yeah, that's over. Time to resign that one. Mm. That's one of those positions where I'm winning material, but it's almost like I don't want to win the material because he's so active here and my pieces are kind of scattered. So where did this one go wrong for me? Maybe I got fancy after knight e2 by playing my knight back to h5. That might be unnecessary. Maybe I should just trade on e2 and go from there. B5, as the, as the game played out, B5 did not play any role. So if I'm going to break in the center, as you often want to do against a wing attack, I should have just played E5 directly here. E5 right on this move. This is a good idea, though, G4, H4. But by playing B5, I gave him an extra move in the attack, H5, and suddenly he's on top of me on the king side. I didn't want to take here because that results in an open G file. So that was bad. This position might be okay somehow. I also looked at knight e4 right here, but maybe that was playable. Knight e4, take, rook takes, with the idea of bishop f4. I missed that bishop f4 was a threat. I thought he could just take here, but that runs into this, and I will win his queen. Okay, so what is it, four and a half, two and a half? Got to win this game. Let's go back to d4. Thank you all for watching. Tuning in in the middle of your day or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. Okay, we're going for this line again. I have a feeling he's going to play b4 this time around. Yeah, <laughs> he does. He didn't want any more of that b takes a4, knight c3 business. Yeah. Okay, this we've played before. We've done this whole song and dance. Bishop g7, knight bd2, etc. And I'm trying to stick my knight on c4 in the middle game. I feel like I get good positions out of this as well. Let's play h3, just restrict his bishop. I'm going to go here. Let's play the knight up. So he can trade on c4 if he wants, uh, which actually probably does help him quite a bit. Take, take, f5. Mm. That might be good play for black. He's going to take my bishop instead, though, and then go for f5. Yeah, this is also possible, although I feel like this permutation of it allows me to keep the position more closed. So I am I feel better about this, let's say. Okay, let's go rook e1 first. Overprotect the e5 pawn. He's going to take... So he's got this pin going here. It's a little annoying for me, but not the end of the world. I might want to play b3 just to really put the brakes on him. Yeah, let's do that. I weaken this diagonal. He can bring a rook to e8, but I'm thinking knight back to f3 now. As a way to attack his queen and get out of the pin. And then next I can move this rook, like, say, to d1. And I'm going to be putting a lot of stock in my d-pawn. I hope this d-pawn becomes an asset because he's got the doubled f-pawns. He does have the bishop pair, but the doubled f-pawns are something to note. So let's take and run this guy then. Push the d-pawn. It's our big trump. Let's go here. Just invade a little bit. I'm not going to push d7 quite yet. I feel like that's premature. Maybe g3? g3 could be awkward for his queen. He does have queen e4. I'm hitting c5, however. Queen takes c5 as a threat. He takes. Okay. Let's take this way. So doubling up my pawns, but maybe okay. Mm hmm. So are you going to play rook takes d6? Does that work for you? I assumed I had queen a8 there, but maybe not. Hmm. Queen a8. Okay, so let's start with that at least. And then I get a knight takes f5, maybe. Or perhaps g3 first. g3 first could be good. I think he's got to play queen e5 in this case. Some tough tactics going on right here. Take, take. All right, I'm going to go for this because it's a little hard to calculate. Can't see everything going on. 
Mm, okay, let's do this. His C pawn is going to become dangerous, though. No doubt about it. Or his B pawn, I mean. Okay, let's check here. Yeah, suddenly he's playing for the win, though. I gotta be really careful. I can't allow a queen trade, for instance. Let's check. Stop that pawn for now. I can try to run my A pawn soon. Still gotta be really careful, though. So whose pawn is faster, mine or his? <laughs> That's the big question here. Um, I'm not too sure about the answer to that question. Looks like we might be mutually queening. Okay, he's going to queen there. All right, now I have some chances at least because I have a slightly better pawn structure. He's way low on time. Let's check. Let's bring this back next. Oh, he hung his queen. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, man. I feel a little bad about that one. Uh, but... Oh, and he was offering me a draw in the last couple moves. I don't know. It's, it's a time scramble at the end. We both have, like, a few seconds left. And I do have a slightly better pawn structure here, I will say. So, yeah, the position should be a draw. But at time scramble, almost anything can happen. <laughs> People are going crazy in the chat. Wow, what an end to this one. Just sending Danny a message there. He put his queen on exactly the wrong square. He really didn't have much time left. Yeah, queen b3. This was an insane game as well. I mean, pretty much all these games are just back and forth. I wonder if there was some way to exploit the position after knight takes d4 and then rook takes d6. Because this was nicely calculated by him if it works out. So basically, if he takes my knight right away, c takes d4, I have rook takes d4. And then I'll be attacking the queen and also defending d6. So he played this as an in-between move. Now I'm temporarily up a piece, but I don't know if I can hold that piece is the problem. Because after queen a8 check and here... I can't move the knight away without losing the rook, unless I move the knight somewhere with check, like knight e6. So I tried to be sneaky and throw in g3. I wonder... Now, nah, g3 wouldn't work here, I don't think. Yeah, and now he played an accurate move, queen e5, keeping a connection with his rook. If, it, if his queen goes somewhere else, like let's say, I don't know, g5, then I would have knight takes f5 here, followed by winning his rook. His queen's no longer protecting it. So, playing in this position, uh, queen e5, he keeps the connection with the rook, and I'm just not sure I can save the piece. I don't see a good way to do it. So I try to get a pawn for it. Take, g takes, he has to take that way. Again, he needs to keep his queen defending. But then he wins my c pawn, and even though I'm up a pawn here, his b pawn is a lot faster than my a and my c pawns. Maybe he could have even avoided the draw somehow. And he tried. Although then later my A pawn became dangerous. It was a roller coaster game. Roller coaster game. Someone said Danny's B pawn seemed winning there. Pushing the A pawn seemed optimistic, but I guess it works. Yeah, no doubt. But I think in the position with my queen on B5, so right here, I got to get some sort of counterplay. Like, as far as defense goes, this is the best position I'll achieve with my queen monitoring his b-pawn. And I do gain some moments to advance this, so I got to do it. And I think right here I'm just in time with a7. If I don't have a7, I'd have to go for something against his king. But he is queening on the very next move, so it's tough. Like maybe I can try queen b6 here looking to take. Queen b6, he queens, take, king here. I can hope for some sort of perpetual, but 
Or maybe it is a draw, actually. Something like this. But a7 was the most straightforward, and I've got a threat of queening on my own. Cool. Thanks, Zara. Glad you like that Scandinavian repertoire. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, Lucas. So, yeah, the ending to this game was not one I would have liked. Danny just hanging his queen with very little time on his clock. But, hey, that's bullet for you. I mean, this is one reason we do play with the one-second increment, I will note, to avoid blunders like this. But... I would have liked to win on the board. I thought I was playing a pretty good game up until the end game, but I went astray somewhere. Danny kept nice pressure with the queen and the two bishops. This position seemed better to me, again, because of the d-pawn, but he found a good way to neutralize my play right here, starting with bishop takes c4, and then bishop d4 interference so he can try to pick up this pawn. Maybe d7 is also worth considering in this position. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Someone says Danny looks sad. I hope he's not too sad. I sent him a message on Skype. He says, no worries, you earned it. <laughs> yeah, Danny is still streaming. I'm just going to ask him. Whether it's on YouTube. Okay, so he's streaming on YouTube. So definitely go check out his stream. And I believe he's playing Simon Williams today, too. He's going to play a match with Simon. So tune in for that. That'll be entertaining. The Ginger GM versus Chess.com's Danny Wrench. And yes, as Georgi pointed out in the chat, this for me is kind of a warm-up for my Saturday match with Grandmaster Tall Baron. So this Saturday, October 1st, I believe, starting at 12 o'clock p.m. U.S. Central Time. That's 1 o'clock Eastern and 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific Time. So I hope you guys can make that one. All right, guys, so sorry for the slight technical issues at the start of this, my microphone not working initially, and then Danny not being able to stream on Twitch, but we still got in a good match with 960 and Bullet. I give myself like a, I don't know, maybe a B minus for my performance. I know that sounds like arrogant or something because I won the match, but I, I was a little bit sloppy in some of these games. Like some of these games, I definitely should have played better. And I'm not completely happy with my performance in the bullet portion. And also that 960 game where I won as queen. I should have won that one too, but I did not play well enough after winning the queen. So there's always things you can improve on in chess. And for me, cleaning up a few of these games would have been nice. I would have liked to see me put Danny away in certain spots. All right, anyways, guys, I'm going to sign off now. Thank you for tuning in. Check out that match on Saturday. There's going to be an announcement video soon. And I look forward to seeing you guys over the weekend. All right, guys. Bye.